welcome. Thank you very much for coming. Can you please tell us what was the reason that brought you to Japan? Well, I think I first became aware of uh, Japanese manga and anime when I was about 13. And uh, they showed Sailor Moon, the anime, on Swedish television. Uh, in Swedish, it was like the worst uh, dub ever. Okay. <laughs> like, it was so bad, but it still managed to catch my interest. And it was such a like revolution for me, because it was the first time that I seen um, an anime aimed at girls, with like girls as main protagonists, and that like made a really strong impression on me. And yeah, it, like Sailor Moon had a really huge influence abroad, actually, I think. Like in Sweden as well, we call it the Sailor Moon generation, because yeah. it was like, yeah, a lot of people discovered Japan and, and anime and manga from Sailor Moon. So yeah, then I got really into Japanese manga and when I was 19 I came here for the first time and then I've been here a lot. So this is my seventh time now. Okay. Yeah. Um, what was your first impression of uh, Japanese anime or manga and what caught your attention? So I guess we go to say that. Yeah, yeah. Back to say that. Sure. <laughs> no, I think it was that. Um, yeah, that I, for the first time I experienced um, animation and, and manga comics for girls. Um, and really like strong female characters. I love that part in Sailor Moon and also I loved uh, Shoujo Kakumu Utena. It's still my favorite anime of all times, and all oh, the characters are amazing. And I really do think that um, the reason why manga and anime has such a profound uh, impression um, amongst young people in the West is because you really love the characters. Like it's very character focused. So whilst in the West, it's a lot of focus on the story. Basically. Okay, awesome. That's continue. Yeah. So, the next question, uh, how long have you been doing manga and how did you develop your style? I, so after watching Sailor Moon, uh, I started to draw my own copy of Sailor Moon, basically it was awful. And I haven't shown it to anyone, and I never will, but that was, I think that was good because instead of just like copying style, I actually drew a comic. Um, and I, that way, I also had to draw things that I wasn't very good at, such as feet or backgrounds. Mm. So that helped. But yeah, I was like really, really bad. And when I debuted in Sweden as well, did my debut, I was 19, no 20, and I was not very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, but I had a really great timing in Sweden that it was at that point where manga became really popular, and there was really no one else doing it. Like more than 10 years ago now. So, so it was good timing. It's good timing for me, yeah. Um, what is your favorite manga? I think you already mentioned that, right? And, and who inspires you? Um, well, so many though, but I would have to say, uh, yeah, I really love shoujo manga and mm, but even shoujo manga is a lot of, of love stories, isn't it? I got a little bit, um, just when I got a little bit sick of love stories, I discovered um, Yasuo Ai Sensei's Nana and Paradise Kiss and etc. And I found her work to be just absolutely amazing. So yeah, I would say my favorite manga is probably Nana. And that was a huge, huge inspiration to me, which I also put a lot into Sangha September when I draw that. Are you sick of love stories now? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, love stories are great. Okay. Love stories are good, but um, I don't know, I just, it wasn't really a thing that interested me that much. Okay. I'm more into friendship All right. stories. Okay, thank you. Uh, next one. What was the message you wanted to give to your readers with uh, Sidemans? For my Japanese readers? Thank you so much for reading it, if you do, and I'm sorry that it's not really... I know that the level is very different from, from a Japanese manga class work. 
Um, but this manga, as well as a lot of other manga that has been drawn outside of Japan by foreigners, it's made with a uh, real love for Japanese manga, and I think and I hope that, that shines through the work, even though the level is maybe not. You're being very humble because it's actually pretty good. It's no, <laughs> I hope it's not. <laughs> I think you, you, you're very humble. Um, and also, there's a previous one, right? You, you, you have all the works. So, in, in this one, this is your latest one, correct? Or not? Yeah, but I did draw the first book almost 10 years ago. Oh, okay. So, I think, especially the first volume, there's a huge difference mm -hmm. in, uh, in style compared to the third volume. But oh, right. That's, uh, that can also be interesting, I guess, if you read it, like the evolution. Of the drawing style, right. basically. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, moving on. Yeah. The um, your favorite parts in Sayonara Sayonara. Do you have any favorite parts? Um, yes, I do. Actually, so the story is about a female protagonist who wants to become a manga com, a comic artist. So she starts at a comic art school, but that's just really an excuse. Like, because that was not the story that I wanted to tell. The story that I wanted to tell is in the second volume, and it's about the main character and a figure from her past. And it was a story that was, it was, it was really close to my heart when I wrote it. And yes, yeah, so that was pretty. When I wrote it, I thought this is such an amazing and important story. <laughs> now I'm not so sure, but yeah, I did like put a lot of feelings into that relationship and how I drew that, so. Do you draw or take from, because everybody does, I guess, uh, somehow when you're trying to be creative, mm -hmm. you, you take from friends' experiences or yeah. your own experiences, and yeah. you try to hide it so people don't know that <laughs> this is what happened to you. Is, is this something similar to that? Yes, it definitely, definitely. Um, well, it is fiction, same so time as fiction, and I'm definitely not the main character at all. Okay. Uh, so I just want to make that clear. But when it comes to the other characters, like Miri is um, this character from Alex, the main character's part. She's based on a real person, partly. And so is a lot of other characters that pops up. So it can be things that I heard from my friends, or it could be that I just thought someone had an amazing look, so I just borrowed their looks, or a really cool name, so I just borrowed their names. It's a little bit of a uh, mishmash of everything, I guess. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, how would you describe Sayonara Sayonara in three words? I really thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I think I failed. Okay, it's fine, you more about But, uh, yeah, melodramatic, okay. definitely. And gender bending, okay. I guess, for a Japanese audience, it would be. But the third one, yeah, it was, it was kind of hard with just one word. But I think since the style changes so much from the first volume to the last one, it's kind of funny that it's set at a comic art school where the characters learn to draw. And you can also see, like, in my style, how I learned to draw throughout the series. So I guess. So there's Drawing a little bit there, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Like metaphysic yeah. reality. I don't know, but so yeah, third one I guess would be uh, technical. Mm. Okay. <laughs> That's super cool. <laughs> what type of stories would you like to make in the future? Oh, I'm... So right now I'm drawing um, Japanese strip comics, Yonkuma Manga, and that's really fun. But I keep saying that I want to go back to story manga someday. I think, but I'm not. I'm not sure that I. I can. Because I, <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit scared of the publishing pace in Japan. It's if you do get published in a magazine, you have to meet your deadline, of course. So yeah, we'll see. Maybe in a little bit. Maybe in a little while. But if I do. I would love to draw an epic fantasy manga. Oh, okay, that sounds awesome. Yeah. So let's let's say you have all the time and you are your own producer because that would be like a dream come true, right? And so you can actually just just uh, be free 
how would that be? What type of story would that be? Oh, well, I think it would be, yeah, more than three volumes, definitely. And uh, maybe set in like really old Sweden or a fantasy world inspired by old Swedish folklore, I think. Because that's also something that I think is a good idea if you're going to work as a manga guy in Japan to draw something that only you can draw as a foreigner. Yeah. Um, maybe Viking type of fantasy or more like elves than fantasy? I think more, more elves. Okay more in that direction. Although the Vikings are pretty cool, but yeah. Sounds awesome. I, I hope that you do it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I do too. Hopefully. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> so last one will be, uh, please give your fans a message. Like, um, and also not only your fans, because as I said, uh, this is uh, for also the Japanese people who are inspired by foreigners who come here. So your fans or any other foreign who is in Japan trying to do what you're doing, trying to come up with a, a piece of art, a work, anything related to creative, because it's very tough. So you did it, you are very successful, so what would you say to them? Um, well, to my fans, or people reading my comic, I just want to say thank you so much, and especially thank you for reading um, Swedish manga, very unusual <laughs> and yeah I'm really touched and moved by that so thank you and to people who aspire to be mangaka in Japan yeah I'm so surprised that it worked out <laughs> I mean uh, no you, you can totally do it and as long as you have a good idea and what do you call it yaruki like, yeah, yeah. Willpower. Willpower, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's definitely possible, so. so so try. And I think also the most important thing is to do what you want. Um, so not really compromising with that. For example, if you want to be a mangaka but you think maybe it's hard, so you like leaning more towards illustrators, don't just try for manga for at least once if that's what you want to do. And it's just not for drawing manga, it goes for everything, obviously. So I I really recommend that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank awesome. you. So thank you very much for doing this interview. Thank you for coming here and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Catch on this.